This is um, one of the ones that are loaning for the exhibit, um, Art Behind Barbed Wire. Um, it's a bird pin that was made in Minidoka. And you can tell it's handmade because of the safety pin that's kind of fixed to the back. We do know that it was made in Minidoka. It was actually found in an estate sale um, in Burien. And the people who were um, running the sale knew that this, uh, the family was in Minidoka. And unfortunately, the, I, I don't remember the name. And actually, uh, my partner actually picked it up as a, a gift to me. Okay. The, the meaning really is that something this beautiful could come out of something so terrible. Um, for the last four or five years, I've been involved with the pilgrimage to Minidoka and have just learned so much more about that area and just the experience that um, that generation had there. Um, and so for me, it's sort of a connection to just the, the spirit that persevered in the camp. One thing that I, I, I keep thinking about in, is lately in the pilgrimage, we've been having younger incarcerees come and a lot of them feel the stories that they have are like happy stories, like playing with their friends and having all this free time and, and sometimes they feel guilty that that's all they remember. And when I talk to them, I mean, I, I understand that feeling, but also it's kind of hopeful that there was something so terrible to be taken away from your home and locked up behind barbed wire, but that human spirit persevered and you know they continued trying to make the best of a really horrible situation. And I guess as a takeaway, I feel like, I hope that people will know the background of the areas where these pieces came from and the fact that people could create things like this when you're taken away from the beautiful Puget Sound you know, region to this very desolate place like desert um, and to create something so beautiful from that uh, situation. Why do I like this piece? Well this is actually one of a few pieces that we actually um, loaned but this one is particularly significant to me because it was the first one. Um, and it was after I think I had attended two pilgrimages. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, when I studied about the incarceration experience in college, I didn't even know about these kind of things, kind of arts and crafts actually occurring in the camps. And so after attending the pilgrimage, I think it was maybe the first, I heard about like bird pins and I was like, what's a bird pin? <laughs> you know, and so, so um, when I actually got one, I didn't expect it to actually look this good. <laughs> I thought it would be something more simple, but it's so, it, you know, I mean, just the, the all of the uh, layers of paint, and it's so intricate that it just really resonated with me, that, um, you know, I, I don't know, just the, the whole kind of feeling that, I don't even know if I could create something like this, but the fact that there were people who were taking time and making something like this, and you know, obviously keeping busy and, and creating very functional items like tonsus and um, you know, painting and, and trying to make the space livable. Um, because when we go on the, the pilgrimage and we see, uh, or we, you know, we talk about what the barracks were like, and again, being only able to take what you could carry, you know, you're not gonna, well, I guess a pin you might take, but you're not gonna be able to carry a dresser, you're not going to be able to carry like your lamp, and, and people being able to create and make these things to make it more like home. It's all very important parts of the experience, I think, and the story. And, it, it, and it, having something like this, or collecting something like this kind of makes me feel more connected, I think, to that whole experience. And you know, every, every object has a story, so.